Okay, question number one. What is the Apocrypha? All right. Uh, let me just grab a book here really quickly. The answer book by Dr. Sam Gipp. I want to look up the man's name. I'll be right back with you. All right, page 45 of Sam Gipp's book, the answer book here. I like how he ha has this uh, phrased here. It says, question, what is the LXX? Another name for the Apocrypha, basically. I'll get into that more as we continue here. Answer, a figment of someone's imagination. Very good. Basically, the way that the story goes, this Apocrypha, the po Apocrypha is a collection of books found in the Septuagint. Okay, And the Septuagint is supposedly a Greek translation of the Old Testament. Now, uh, apparently between the time of the finish of the Old Testament, the last book written in the Old Testament, until the time of Jesus Christ showing up, the Jews decided that they needed to evangelize the Greek world. So they wanted to make a translation of the Old Testament from Hebrew into Greek. Okay, So there was supposedly this thing here, the letter of Aristides. And they, this guy decided that he was going to basically get six Jews from each of the 12 tribes together. And that, you know, six times 12 is 72. And that they would take these, this committee and they would make this translation from Hebrew into Greek. And then, so this translation was made, and then that's what the Jews were using in the time of Jesus and the disciples, that Jesus and the disciples were quoting from the Greek Septuagint, right? And that's, so that's, you know, this great, wonderful thing. Uh, the big problem, a couple, there's a whole bunch of big problems, but the big problem with it is that this Septuagint, the LXX, as it's designated, um, has apocryphal books in it books of the Apocrypha. In other words, books that are not part of what we would call the 66, you know, the, the Christian Bible, the 66 books of the Bible. Now, they are in the Catholic Bible because they teach a lot of false doctrine. But, you know, that's just where the problems begin. Let's go over some other problems. First of all, the fact that the thing is called LXX. Now, if you understand uh, Roman numerals, L is 50, X is 10. So you have 50 plus 10 plus 10 equals 70. But wait a second. It's uh, six Jews from each of the 12 tribes equals 72. So why isn't it called the LXII? <laughs> it's kind of weird. But uh, another big problem is that you have this thing of, oh, well, we had uh, six Jews from each of the 12 tribes come together to make a translation. Uh, well, that doesn't work either because if you understand the Old Testament, there there was only one tribe that was allowed to translate and transmit scriptures down through the years, and that was the Levites. So if you would have approached Orthodox Jews and said, "Hey, let's get six men from each of the twelve tribes," they'd have said, "Whoa, what are you? You know, to make this translation, they'd been like, what are you talking about? You know, they're never they're not going to translate their holy scriptures. I mean, the Jews today still have their scriptures in Hebrew. You know." Uh, the real sacred ones. You know, why would they make translation into Greek? Okay, that's kind of odd. But, you know, you're not going to, you're sure not going to get back then in the Old Testament times, you're sure not going to get six Jews from each of the 12 tribes to make this translation. But there's another big problem, which is actually spelled out in Scripture. And that is in Matthew chapter 5, verse 18. Uh, Jesus speaking, it says, For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law till all be fulfilled. Now, jots and tittles are Hebrew letters. Okay, Hebrew characters, essentially. That you know, They're not Greek letters. So if Jesus and the disciples were using a Greek translation of the Hebrew Old Testament, uh, why would he be referring to Hebrew letters? You know, I don't think so. And Jesus oftentimes read the scriptures in the synagogue. Now, according to my understanding, they don't read anything but Hebrew in the synagogues, especially back in Jesus' day. So this whole thing, it, when you actually start to examine this, this teaching of this Septuagint and these apocryphal books, it really starts to fall apart. But that's not the biggest evidence. The biggest evidence is that there is no such thing as a B.C. Septuagint. 
the only copies of the, the oldest copies of the Septuagint that exist only date back to the, basically to this, uh, this perverse scholar origin, uh, Adamantius origin, I think his name was, um, his Hexapla, okay, that he wrote after the New Testament was completed. It was probably right around 100 to 200 AD, right around that area in there. You know, I don't have the exact date here, but the point is, you know, it goes back to that. But there's no such thing as a B.C. Septuagint. There are no extant copies of the Septuagint that go back before the time of Christ. But that's when it was supposedly written. See, the whole thing just doesn't work out. All right. So when somebody comes along and they try to tell you that, that uh, Jesus and the disciples used a Greek Old Testament, they don't know what they're talking about. They're lying. They're basically repeating something that has been told and told and told and told. And it goes right back to Roman Catholicism. So don't fall for the thing of, you know, the apocryphal books being some kind of a, a great uh, authority that we should have and our Bible's missing books and all this other stuff. It's nonsense.